presence. Please, Lord, accept our thanks in Jesus' name. This morning, we ask the Holy Spirit that you will speak to us. We ask, Lord, that you will encourage us. We ask, Lord, that you will position us and give us the grace to press you continually into the new year in the name of Jesus. I ask that, Lord, you will speak through me. You will declare your counsel. That I will not commit blunder on your word, and your name shall be glorified. In Jesus' name we pray. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I'm just thanking God for this day, and I'm praying for the providers of this microphone. God will meet your needs in Jesus' name. Amen. Second Kings chapter 6. Second Kings chapter 6, verses 1 to 7. We have read it almost like two, three times today. Because that was also the verse of the scripture, the chapter of the scripture we read during the open heaven um, studies. Though we were looking at it from a different angle. But this morning, God is bringing a message of hope to us. And God, is, God has sent me this morning to encourage you. God has sent me to encourage every one of us. And the assurance that God is giving us, even as we just read in that passage of the scripture, is that all we end in praise in the name of Jesus. I'm sure that you will still remember that the theme for our month is still ending in praise. So I'm speaking on still ending in praise part two. Still ending in praise. And God gave this word assuring us that regardless of what we have been through, regardless of the lockdown, regardless of all of limitations, barriers, that we have not been able to actually achieve the full potentials of all of our plans, our dreams this year. God is saying to us, it will still end in praise. There are people that will be looking at themselves and they will say, there are little or no progress made. What is making me happy? From where I come from, there is a way they, they coin the language. They say, what is making that prisoner happy? What is, what is happy in that prisoner, why, why is he excited? It's just a way of describing that with the situation you have found yourself, there is no reason why you should be dancing, there should be no reason why you should give praises to God. You know, several people, just like what we saw in the scripture, are filled with questions. Why did this happen? Why me? Why now? Why not this way? You know, the scripture made it known to us in this particular passage, Second Kings chapter 6, verses 1 to 7. The source of the prophet were the one that came to their uh, major prophet, the prophet of the land. They went to Elijah and said, Man of God, uh, by the grace of God, the church is progressing. The sons of the prophet are increasing. And um, we started this place when we were just three of us. And then now we are like 40 in number. There is no way, this place is no more containing us. And we are thinking, we have a dream of making it a bigger place or even relocating. Let's just go and fetch uh, beams, build a, a bigger house, a better accommodation. And it was a nice idea. It was a very nice idea. And the man of God did not even hesitate. He told them, he said, that is a laudable uh, uh, ambition. Can you go ahead? I'm in support. I support you. Go ahead and do it. And one of them quickly turned back and said, ah, sir, I don't know how it feel, but um, I just think that he will go with us. We will carry more grace if you go with us. And the man said, okay, you want me to go with you? I can do it. There's nothing I'm doing here. We could all be doing it better. And they went. The scripture says as soon as they got there, they started work. That is one interesting thing that I found there. As soon as they got there, what were they doing? 
they started to walk. They came to Fairview and they got there. They started. I think that is in verse 4. They started to cut the wood. Not that they were playing, not that they started jesting. I like you to begin to take note of those things. Because there are many of us that when we had plans, when we had visions, when we had dreams, and we said, this is what I'm going to do, that is what I'm going to do. By the time we got to where we're supposed to do it, rather than doing it, we get ourselves distracted and we are involved in many, many other things. Yet, by the time we sum it up, we want to shift and put all the blames on God. If you ask some people why nothing has been done, why nothing has been achieved, why no progress has been made, all they will tell you is a pandemic. <laughs> and of course, the pandemic is all over the world, right? So you don't need to say much. It's like um, if you have a credit card and you cannot pay your credit card, you will call your bank and say it's a pandemic. And this is it. <laughs> they will pardon you. If you cannot pay your rent and you call and you say it's because of the pandemic, they will do what? They will pardon you. But there are people that know that it is not even the pandemic that is responsible for their inability to pay. But it was just because some of them are damn lazy. But they want to have a way to put it where? On pandemic. But the joy in this is that pandemic will be over. Amen. As a pandemic will be over. Amen. In the name of Jesus. So the Bible said they got to walk. And as one of them was walking. So very, very clear from this passage of the scripture that they all went with their equipment. They all went with their instrument. None was depending on each other. So if you do your own, I'm going to do mine. I'm beginning to preach again. I'm beginning to tell you what God wants you to know. You have to do yours and I have to do mine. You play your part and I play my part. The reason why some people are overboarding this year is because some of us did not do what we are supposed to do. The reason why we are still limited and we cannot get to where we intended to get to is because some of us abandon what we are supposed to do. If a wife abandons what she should do in a house, there is no way the husband alone can carry everything and attain success. If the husband becomes very lazy and left the wife to do the whole job, there is no way success can be achieved in all the realms as they may so, end, and they, they may so desire in that home. The scripture so told us in the book of 2 Corinthians that we are members of the same body. You may be the hand. Somebody else may be the leg, somebody may be the head, somebody may be the eyes, somebody may be the nose. But each part of this body has an important role to play to ensure it. All of you got here by the grace of God. If you don't have eyes, it might have been difficult for you to get here. If your ears are not working, it might have been difficult for you to hear why you are even there, even if you get here. If you don't even have leg, to walk here may be very difficult. Praise the Lord. So every part of your body is very crucial and important. They all have a role to play. And that is what we saw in the life of the sons of the prophet. And the scripture said, they all got there. And as one of them was filling a beam, the accent fell into the water. And he quickly called, hey, this thing was borrowed. It's not even our own. The man of God asked, where is it? They said here, and miracle was performed like we said in the morning. A wood which is supposed to be a lighter material was thrown into the river to cause an iron which is expected to be an heavier object to swim. So when the lighter suspend the weight here, there is a miracle being displayed there. And I am trusting God in our lives in the name that is above every other name. Miracle like never before in the year 2021 will begin to manifest in every area of our life in the mighty name of Jesus. God has asked me to encourage us this morning that rather than living your life in excuses, you should proceed to excellence. Rather than Trying to find a reason to cover up for your inability to achieve what you have dreamt or desire to have. 
you should rather desire to look for a way to getting it done in 2021. If God is still giving you life, if God is still keeping you, God is still saying that I am giving you yet another opportunity to achieve it. Leave the question. Some people, they are pondering what they are thinking is, where was God that uh, when I called? Or where was God when all these things were befalling me? And that is the question they are living with and they are just romanticizing with. Where is the power of, as of old that our father told us? Did, did I not pray? I asked God, I fasted. And God still allowed this one to happen. Why did God stop this evil even before it comes to me? Despite the prayers of saying, I was it that people are not praying. You want to tell me that people did not pray all over the world? Or God did not hear the prayer of anyone at all? Why did he have to even linger this much? This pandemic started almost like end of February into March. And up until now, we are still fighting it. Vaccine will be out. Vaccine is coming. Vaccine will be here. And several people have died. But that you are still alive is because God is interested in you, sir. God is interested in you, man. And God is saying, I am still ready to give you another chance. Some people, because of all that did, all that has happened, they are now like, is there any hope for the new year? Do I need to bother myself? You know, that, that, that son of the prophet that has his accent fell in, into the ocean could have simply said, oh, there is nothing I'm going to do. And he will keep his mouth, he will keep his mouth shut. He just said, well, I have tried all I needed to do. And God, invited, God will be a witness. I followed them all the way from our house to this bush. If anybody says I'm lazy, I have not done anything, then let it be to him or her. Do you know that if Joseph had done that, his dreams would not have been realized. God spoke to Joseph. Genesis chapter 37. He was still a teenager. When God began to show him revelations of what is going to happen to him from verse 5 to 11. God said, I'm going to make you this, I'm going to make you that. And he was even sharing the revelation with his brethren. This is what God said. This is what God said. And the Bible said they hated him because of that. But I think around verse 11, the scripture said, but his father observed the same. And when an opportunity came for his brethren, they decided that they were going to kill him. And do you know the reason why they wanted to kill him? They said, by the time we kill him, we will see what will become of his dream. That was their target. We will see what becomes of his dream. Verse 20 of chapter 37, Genesis. Genesis 37, 20. We will see what will become of his dream. By the time we deal with him, by the time we terminate his life, let's see whether the counsel of God over him can still come to fruition. That was all their plan. I want to say, oh, don't let us kill him, let us send him into slavery. They sold him. They never knew that all they were doing, they were acting on the purpose and the plans of God. Because when God was telling him, you are going to be this great, you are going to be this that mighty, God didn't say where it's going to happen. Many of the times, God revealed to us what will be the result, and God never showed us the processes. So when you start going through the process, it is not because God has changed his mind. Hello, sir. Because of all that happened this year, it is not a proof that God is not interested in where he's taking you to. If God has said it, God will do it. The Bible said he's not a man that he will lie. Neither the son of man that he will repent. If God told you I am taking you this far, he cannot take you there I will take you halfway and abandon you. That's why I love the song of this guy, Moses. He said he is too faithful to fail me. He's too faithful to, have, to, to disappoint. He said, I have come to realize he's just too faithful. He cannot. God can take us this far and abandon us. And that was the promise that Joseph had unto him. And when his brother was condemning himself, ah, we have done this. By the time God brought it to us, 
He said, don't condemn yourself. Read that Genesis chapter 45. From verse 5 to 8. He said, you don't have to give yourself any problem. He said, because you are not the one that sent me here. God, in his infinite plan, that is not known to me. He devised it. He programmed it. He sent me ahead to preserve life. To preserve posterity. As it is this day. That is why God has sent me. And no, sir, what you are going through, God programmed it for you. God programmed it that there will be pandemic. God programmed it so that you can know that he is still reigning in the affairs of mankind. God programmed it not because he wanted to slow you down. God wanted to test you how trusting you could be in him. There are many people that have lost hope in Christ. They have lost hope in God. There are people that are not serving God anymore. There are people that are now like, what determines how they live their life is these things around them. They no longer carry faith. But God wanted to know. Even if you go through this hard time, are you still going to maintain your way? Do you believe if I have told you that it will end the praise, that it is going to end the praise? It may not appear as if it is going to be like, but whatever God says, God will do. God needs you and me to realize that he is too faithful to fail. He can't fail. He says it is going to end the praise. It will end the praise. And that was what Joseph told his brethren. As a matter of fact, when their father got to know that Joseph was alive. If you read Genesis chapter 46, that old man, I know he, he remembered. You know, Scripture said he observed the same. When they went back to him and told him that an animal has killed your son, he said, wow. He mourned for his son. All he was thinking with him is, God that I know. Observe that thing. If you show this revelation, <coughs> could this boy die? <laughs> so by the time they told him that we saw your son is alive, he went back to God. And the revelation God showed him. Don't be afraid, go there. He told your son is waiting. The man had that mindset. It had to end in praise. If God has said it, I don't know what God told him. I don't know how far, what revelation that God has showed to you. Just like God showed to these sons of the prophet, this place is too small. You want to have a bigger place. They have that dream. They saw it and they asked the representative of God, how about this? And he said, yes, you can go ahead. It's a confirmation that God was interested. And he even asked, they asked him, will you please go with us? And he said, yes, I'm going with you. Hello, sir. God is with you. Amen. Hello, man. God is with you. Amen. That the opposite is happening at the moment is not an indication that God has abandoned you. They are just part of the processes to bring in the dreams to reality. I'm going to just mention a few points that I like and then we, 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 that I want us to look at here and we pray. In that particular passage, in verse 1, things that we saw that I and you need for us to get ourselves prepared for the coming year. Despite all that has happened in year 2020, Scripture told us from verse 1 of that second King chapter 6, they desired a change. Let me tell your neighbor, desire a change. Desire a change. What should you do? How do you treat? How do you attend to the present situation? Desire a change. What you have seen is not pleasing. What you have seen is not satisfactory. What is happening is not what you bargained for. God is 
your desire. Desire a change. Begin to tell yourself, I can't be here. I cannot be at this level. I can't remain at this spot. It will not continue to be like this. Desire that change. Let that change. You know, it is, it is different. When you desire something, it's different from when you just like it. Or when you just see it. When you desire it, it hits deep into your heart. It becomes a form of conscious part of your daily activity. Whatever you do, whenever you are doing them, that thing becomes a part of you. You carry it, it forms a passion with you. Desire a change. Have a passion for a change. When you desire it, you have passion for it, you will begin to program it. It enters into you, it is registered into you. Desire a change. These guys, they went to the, the, the prophet. This place is too small for us. We no longer want to dwell here. Desire it. Desire it. That's why the Bible was saying in Matthew chapter 7 verse 7. Ask, it shall be given. Seek, you will find. Knock. When you desire something, you will give everything to it. You don't want to just take a no for an answer. No! I cannot continue to be in this form. This is not the best way for me. You desire it. You crave for it. Second Corinthians told us that you should desire the best gift. Covet the best gift. So when you desire something, when you want a change, desire it. Number two, design a plan for your change. The sons of the prophet, they went to the prophet. They told him, this place is too small for us. Now, this is our plan. We want to go and take a big inch. I'm sure, I don't know how many numbers there were, how many there were. But they must have had a plan. They must have calculated that if you carry more, uh, you carry more, you carry more. By the time we bring these ones back, it will be enough. They have designed their plan. Hello, sir. Hello, man. Design your plan. Now. How do you get there? Some of us, so many of us, we, we sit at desiring or at liking, at wishing. That is a saying that if wishes were a horse, even the beggars will do what? They will ride. But that is to tell you that witches are not horses. That you just like it, that you just want it, it is not going to say that it is coming to you automatic. I always say it here. It's a joy to know that God will not do for you what you can do for yourself. Design a plan. It is part of the design of your plan when you tell yourself, I want to become a medical doctor. A medical doctor knows that he needs to go to school. He needs to go to college of medicine. He needs to do this. You know, I want to become a lawyer. A lawyer knows that he needs... I want to become a trader. I want to become a successful businessman. I want, this is my dream. The part of your design is skill acquisition. You ask questions. What you don't know, you don't hide it like you know it. You build a plan. This is where I want to start. You can even study the life of those that have gone ahead of you. You look at them. People that are successful. There are so many of us that we are only friends with people that we can brag over. That we can show. <laughs> hey, sit up there, my friend. They don't have anything to also offer you. 
You don't relate with people who can sell ideas to you. You don't relate with people who can impact your life. I'm sorry. You're going to be there. Nobody goes beyond whatever he or she knows. If you have seen someone who is more successful than you in an area that you desire to be successful, they move closer to that person. Be humble enough to ask him or her. So many of us know the people that we should work with, but you, you just want to lay back. I don't want to. I don't, ah! You don't want to do what? Move closer. Let the person abuse you. Let the person talk to you. Let the person. You will achieve whatever you want to achieve. It is your own design, your own plan. Number three. Demand for his presence. In verse 3 of that chapter, one of them ran back and said, Sir, we can't go alone. We need you. Hello, sir. You need God. Don't allow anybody tell you that you can have success without God. Success without God is failure in disguise. Because that success is not founded. It's not ever going to last. Seek God more than ever. We were discussing it in the workers' meeting. There are so many of us that don't even study the Bible. We say we read the Bible. You have only been able to read one chapter of the scripture since you gave your life to Jesus. And you have never been able to read two. Some people, it's just one verse of the scripture per day that they have been reading. If they have never been able to read two verses. The unfortunate part of it is that some people have been reading two, three, four chapters and they can't read more than a verse now. That is even worse off. Desire, demand the presence of God. How do you demand the presence of God? It is by you making a conscious effort to pray, to fast, to study the word of God, read Christian literatures, have a chat with people of like mind, attend Bible studies. Oh yes, are you not going to be tired? You will be tired. But when you know that it is part of what you should do, you will do it. I was talking to someone, I said, ah, I'm very tired this time. I need to rest. I need a lot of rest. He said, ah, okay, go home and go and rest. He said, but don't tell me that you are going for a night. I said, ah, if they call me to come, I will try and go. <laughs> I was tired. But I still desire that if I have opportunity to work, I will create that time to go and work because I need what? I need this thing. The same way you desire that money, desire the word of God, desire the presence of God. There are many of us that we will have succeeded on those things we were doing if only we had the backings of God. But because you want to do it all your own, your own way, all alone by yourself, God is also watching you just like a father that sat and be watching a, a boy, a child. Trying to make his own effort known. As long as you are not involving God, God will still be watching you. When you are done, you will do what? You will return to call me. Remember the prodigal son who felt that not I have inheritance, I don't need my father. He had everything that he needed to succeed in life. But within a split of second, everything was became wasted. Why? Because it detached from the source. Don't detach from the source. Let me tell you, neighbor, don't detach from the source. Everything we have in praise, but never detach yourself from your source. Demand his presence on a daily basis. Pray like you will not work. Pray like all your life depends on it. Seek God like you are not going to do anything. Pray fast. Study the word of God. There are many of us if we are to extract our life this year. Every portion of the Bible that you have read all through from January to December, this today, if they put everything together, it's not up to a chapter of the scripture. And you are claiming that you know God. When you say, Do you know God? Say, I know God. Ah, I'm serving God. God even knows I'm serving God. knows that you are serving him. You are serving him with a chapter of the scripture. When you have how many books? Since it's these books, that is not to tell you the verses of the scripture, the chapters that are there. If you are the, the examiner 
and somebody had a score of one over a hundred, will you give that person pass mark? And you will say that I know God. You know, it's easier for all of us to claim that I'm telling God. God knows me. God knows you. God knows that your name is what your name is. But demand is presence. Please a demand. Please a premium on it. Let your life so depend on it. Nobody needs to force you to do Bible study. Nobody should force you to do vision. Nobody should force you to pray. You make up your mind. I am not wasting my own time. I am doing it because it is good for me. Number four. Number four. Display your diligence. Verse 4 of that scripture says, So he went with them, and when they came to Jordan, they cut down wood. What did they say they were going to do before? They want to go and cut wood. And what did they do when they got there? They started cutting the wood. Display your diligence. Let it be known. Display your expertise. Don't, don't waste time. Oh, others may be gossiping. Let them gossip. Others may be backbiting. Let them backbite. Others may, may be like a Let them be. Others may trivialize things. Let them do it. You know where you are going. You know what is your de destination. Where is your destination? I'm sure that when Joseph was living his life in Potiphar's house, so people will have been telling you, we are telling you, this show of life is too much. Take it easy. You are not the only one. But the guy knows. He knows where he's going. He knows that a dream God showed him is to become a prime minister. Even when he got to the prison, he was still showing that control. He was still showing that power. He said, this is the grace I carry. I'm not going to hide it because I'm, I'm facing a challenge. Because I'm in the dungeon here, that doesn't mean that my talent, my potentials will be buried. Why I see your face, you are looking dull. What exactly is the problem? I, because I, I had the dream. So tell me your dream. He was helping people because he knew that was his mission. So when his brothers were fighting themselves, he told them, don't fight yourself. You did not bring me here. God sent me ahead. This is what I already know about myself. And I won't allow anyone or anything to take it away from me. Please, you have to be diligent in whatever you are doing. Diligence is showing your expertise. Showing the difference. Making a difference in whatever you are doing. Do it like every other person cannot do it that way. Go extra my hard extra pain. Don't just say, this is what I'm going to do and then, let me just do it and control. No! If Joseph was doing it that way, it would not have been noticed. But he was always adding extra. Remember when the king asked him, all the king asked him was come and interpret the dream. He could have interpreted the dream and just leave. He could have still have found him and possibly be reward him. By the time he interpreted the day, he told them what to do. He said, King, live forever. You know what you are supposed to do? Some people will say he is overstepping his arm. Do you know what you can do? At the solution to this thing is that let's look for an officer who can be in charge of storage during the years of plenty. Let's store so much that it will be known, not even only for us in this land, even others outside can still come. Do you think that is possible? Oh, it's possible, sir. Just look for a wise man, a man that is discreet, a man that knows what he's doing. And what did the Pharaoh say? Pharaoh said, we have not found anyone. What Joseph simply did that day was a display of his diligence. He is trying to challenge the king. Can you look out for any man that has my kind of pedigree? Can you look for a man that has my kind of expertise? Can you get anyone around you that has this kind of wisdom and inspiration? 
He is selling himself. Please, sell yourself. Package yourself. Some of us don't have a ready-made CV. Not even one. Not even one. And we are believing God. Even if they call you now, quickly send your resume. Can you send it in one minute? Yes, you are carrying this phone. I am done. I'm carrying Android phone. The phone that should contain almost everything about you in a split of seconds. They will be asking you, where did you do it? I have one ready made. That's why I look at some people today, they say they are looking for a job. It is when they get a job, they say, ah, go and compile your CV. That's when they start running. Hey, hey, who will help me to do my CV? Who will help me? Whether it's a perfect CV or a perfect one, do you have anyone at all? Because a need may arise. Display your diligence. Show to the world that you are capable. Show to God that you are capable. Let people find something useful in you. Number five. Don't be too secretive. What did I say? Help me tell your neighbor, be hopeful. Tell him, say somebody, be hopeful. Be transparent. Some of us, because we are keeping secrets, that is why we are killing ourselves. That is a, an adage from where I came from. He said, if you are quiet, your home will be quiet with you. Isn't it? <laughs> if the man whose axe head fell into the river had no scream, would the man of God hear anything? The man of God said, what happened? He said, ah, I borrowed this thing when I was coming. I thought that, as a matter of fact, at that time, it was like everything has ended. And also, that difficulty you think you are going through, somebody went through it. And they made it. All they need to tell you is that you need patience. Or you need to go this way. Or you need to turn this way. If I come to this land, and I don't ask people that I meet in this land how it is done in this land. I may not make it in this land. But when you come into a place and you ask people that you met in that place how it is done in that place, you are likely to record success. They say that it is the people that we meet in the camp that is called the fathers of the camp. Whether a small girl of your grandchild uh, age, but as long as you meet him or her in that place, don't be deceived. He is what? He's your boss. If you don't know as much as he or she knows, please submit. Some of us have been keeping certain things to ourselves and it is not allowing us. In 2021, God is saying, if he's ending the press, if only you will understand this. He said the cause does not hide from those that will wash him or her. So be secretive. You have been secretive and there has not been results. You have hide it, hide it from here. Oh, the witches, if I say it over here, witches will climb. If I say, you know, I think the only one they are looking for. What did you do to them that you are the one they are chasing about? Talk to people that can help, that can assist. The guy scream, Alas, master, we borrowed it. And help came. Help came. Instantly, help came. God, we send help your way. Amen. God will send help my way. Yeah. There are helpers everywhere, I tell you. It's only what you don't discuss that you don't find a, a solution for. Because there is hardly anything you are going to go through or that you are going through that somebody else has never gone through. He screamed. If 
verse 5. And everybody gets attention by drawn to him. Please make noise. Let them know that you need help. Don't die in silence. Some, of, some people are carrying body. Why are they having blood pressure? Because they are carrying it alone. Why are they not having sleepless nights? Because they are carrying it alone. Some people who finally know they will carry their own and drop upon you. Beam. You refuse to drop your own on some people. <laughs> you can't carry it alone. You cannot. I hardly don't talk anything that happens with me. Immediately, I find somebody to talk to. Why? I am transferring my wife. We say, and we are just talking now, you are sleeping. Why would I sleep? <laughs> we are still talking and I'm snoring. By the grace of God, it's a blessing from heaven. <laughs> because thinking about it is not going to change it. Yeah. In fact, when my head is full, I can now plan on what to do. I look for somebody, I quickly transfer on her. Hey, please, you know that uh, this thing that happened. And, uh, I mean, uh, uh, I am transferred. <laughs> oh, if this is Amelia, I goes, Amelia, how are you today? I'm very busy. Ah, no, 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 one minute, one minute, don't go, one minute. I quickly say some things. It's a way of transferring it. Sometimes I will call you, I'll begin to greet you. Uh, how are you, sir? And uh, I will speak with him. I speak to Mr. Lawi. I, I, I will disip. what is in my mind, I, I don't exceed, I don't, it's never going to be a body. Then I can have a clearer understanding of what to do, and even to pray. It may just be a word, ah, maybe we just pray, or maybe we just call on God, ah, maybe I had that. They won't even know that they are giving me a solution to what I was looking for. Stop being secretive. Stop being secretive. Number what now? Be allowed to know the precise location or area where you go wrong. Be allowed to know the precise location or area where it all went wrong. You know the reason why some people have not been able to come out of that difficulty? Is because they have not been able to pin the location where it all went wrong. They could not discover where the mistake was made. And they just keep on, they keep trying. And there are some people, they knew where they missed it, but pride will not allow them to come back. So you can see it's two ways. Some people are too carefree, careless, they don't consider anything. That when they go wrong, and rather than going on a straight line, things tilted, and they begin to move out of the way, they cannot trace back that position, that location where they once missed it. And I tell you, sir, I tell you, man, if you cannot trace that location, sometimes it's difficult for you to recover. Luke chapter 15. If the prodigal son had not returned home, he would not have ever recovered in his life. He told himself, the Bible said, when he came to himself, that is, he, he, he looked at it, where did I go wrong? Where did you go wrong? How? Here. And suddenly something told him, you detached from the source. You left home. And he said, what? Could that be my problem? He said, I will now return to my father. That is where he belongs. He traced that location where he missed it. Please let us be humble to admit and accept our errors. Some people knew their own, but pride will not allow them. He said, Ah, what will people say? Hey, what will people think? How do I say I'm sorry? Ha. You did not look at me like, hey. When you know that if you do it, that will be the end of it. You know you are wrong. Say, I am sorry. So that the person that you say I'm sorry to today, who is supposed to help you tomorrow, will be able to help you cheerfully. 
Some of us are bringing enemies all around us just because we cannot say sorry. And that is why people that should help you, that's why they have turned against you. And you are saying God did not answer your prayer. God says I answered. It is you that did not answer. So know the location, know the precise area, where it went wrong. Be vigilant. God is also telling you this because in the process when you start, I know some people are going to hear the word and they're going to say, yes, God spoke to me today. And they're going to say, I'm going to start all over. When you start all over and you start taking it step after step as you are moving, there may be a tendency that you deviate a little. Just be sensitive so that you can go back there and continue. Scripture says in 2 John, little children, this I say to you that you sin not. But if we sin, because God knows that it is almost not possible for you if you are still in the flesh. But if we sin, we have an advocate with the Father. There is somebody who is there to plead your matter. Once you realize it, and that is why you must do everything possible to stay with God. And the last one, because of our time, so let me say a second, let me say two more. Be prepared to take it up again. When you realize where you fall, be prepared to rise again. Be ready to pick it up from where you left it. There are so many of us that have left what we were doing before. How we used to serve God, how we used to be diligent, how we used to be caring, how we used to be up and doing in the house of God, even at workplaces, around our friends, how we used to call people, how we used to care for them. You ask after them, but something happened, you just decided, I'm not going to talk to nobody again, I'm going to keep to myself. And now God is telling you, go back there. Be prepared to go back there. Oh, there are some people you have vowed in your life, I'm never going to talk to him again. I'm never going to speak to her again. But the Spirit of God is convincing you and saying, talk to him, talk to her. Be ready to do what? To submit. Go back to that same point. Talk to him. Like you say sorry to somebody who is younger than you, does not make you less than who you are. He doesn't. And maybe I'll say the last one, and we're asked to pray. Never rejoice at people's fall. As we go into the new year, never you rejoice because your brother fell, because your sister fell. Don't rejoice. These people, all of them, stood when the axe had fell. And until they recover, all of them recover. It was a joy to all of them. It was not recorded. Uh, we told you, <laughs> you are you are too much. You are doing clack clack clack. You see you. We have ended it now. Did we not warn you? No. Oh. Hello, sir. That somebody is at the top is not saying that you will not get to the top because he at the top there are enough spaces. It is only crowded at the bottom. If you see people that are struggling and competing, they are people that are on the ground. He competes, he dresses more than me, he is speaking better than me, he has money more than me. That person is not anywhere. When last have you had that good thing and you take a fighting? Eh? Have you had that uh, big gate is fighting, uh, what's his name? Zuckerberg. Have you heard that they are fighting, they are competing? In the, at the top, there are enough spaces. That's what I was telling the workers in the morning. I need all of us to be there because there is enough spaces. We have enough. They say from where I came from, the, the air is big enough for birds to fly without affecting each other. That's why you have never had that two beds flew and they collide or they, they, they jam or they crash. No. Because enough. 
It's only grounded at the bottom. What am I saying? What am I saying? What did God say? Leave the bottom. Go to the top. Move up. Let me tell you, neighbor. Move up. Tell him in 2021, move up. Do like this. Move up. It is time to move up. That's why I raised the team for the Congress of this year. It's time to fly. I am going to begin to fly. But I started flying. Not as witches or wizards. <laughs> I am flying into prosperity. I'm flying into joy. I'm flying to abundance of health. I'm flying to progress. I'm flying to promotion. Because at the top, there is enough room. Can you please rise up on your feet? If we heard the praise, if only you can desire a change, if only you can design a plan, if you can demand for the presence of God, if you can display your diligence or intelligence, if you will cease to be secretive, you will be allowed to know when you are wrong and where you are wrong, you will be prepared to start all over and that you will not rejoice over people's downfall. Can you just ask God, Lord, give me grace this morning. Give me the grace, Lord. I believe you that it will end in joy. I believe that it will end in praise. I am prepared for my days of praise. I'm prepared for my days of celebration. Lord, give me grace. Give me grace. Give me grace, Holy Spirit. Give me grace. Give me grace, Lord. Give me grace in the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, give me grace. Give me grace. Let's continue to pray. Grace, grace. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Brethren, can we turn our hands to our pastor in our feet all this morning? Let's ask that the God should be filling afresh. That his vessel shall never run dry. That the God should be filling his cup. Let's pray, let's pray, let's pray. That has imparted on this morning that the Lord should be feeling. That the power to do more. The power to do more. The Lord shall put on top the bosom. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Offering 